Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the episode of Pat Taste Performance. Hey, in the driveway, we have this lovely Craftsman 26 inch 28cc quiet technology powered snowblower. Now, if you guys are repeat viewers of the customer, the missus and I finally got one of these last year and we did a video on it. If you guys are interested in seeing that video where we did a comparison, is it really quiet or not? Um, I will throw up that video in the description or somewhere and you guys could look at that yourself. So, the missus was on her way home, stopped at a garage sale and picked this thing up for 200 bucks. Now, the seller and she didn't realize that obviously not running, right? That'd be in a perfect world. But when the missus went to go check for compression because it was not running, she pulled the handle and she said oil came squirting out because the dipstick was missing. So I think she was kind of flustered by it, but she knew it had compression and um, the guy actually went to go look for the dipstick. He couldn't find it. So at 200 bucks, considering, considering what snowblowers are going for now, this is a very good deal. Where she failed and I failed too is that I thought all quiet technology snowblowers have power steering. Because that would make this a very, very nice, expensive, high-end machine. This one does not have power steering. Also, I guess because she was distracted by a few other things, um, this right here does not work. Yeah. Mm. See how it doesn't go one way? or the other, or you see how this rotates. Ah, that is because this right here is stripped on the inside. And if we go to a, another snowblower, this is of course an MTD made machine. We have two more MTD made machines. We have one from Colombia that is sent to us from Pablo Escobar. We are very, very excited to have this on the channel. Straight from Colombia, right from the Medellin cartel. Long live Pablo, thank you very much. Okay, and then we have this thing, four-way. Now, even though this is four-way and this one's crank, it's still the same. Can you see how this follows? That one, unfortunately, does not. Now, there is a hack repair that usually works on these and I tried it on our machine and it did not work. So yeah, let's go around. <clears throat> and as you guys could see, it bulged out right here. Okay, and what you can do sometimes is you guys could put a bigger washer in here and then tighten it down and it did not work. All right guys, there is a also another MacGyver-like repair. I don't like using the word hack. I don't think it is a hack um, to use what you have. And I hypothesized about it, but I never had the marbles to do it myself because if it didn't work then I would be spending more money that wasn't necessary so I felt it was more comfortable and easier to just spend the money get the right part and then install it and sell it. this machine is for resale which is also another thing why 
I would choose not to do the hack repair for the MacGyver-like repair for the first time is that I'd rather have it as is from the factory. This may be better. And like I said, I spoke to somebody who does what we do and I shared my idea with him and he says he does it all the time. So I'll explain that to you later on. Until then, we will go with the factory repair. All right, the part number, I'm sorry, the exact link, we got this off of eBay. eBay had the best price. The link to purchase this part will be in the description. And yeah, use that link. It is the cheapest price at the time that we found it. If it works for us, it will work for you. So let's start by looking at the machine. Obviously, we're gonna have to transfer over the chute. That is the easiest part. We will save that for the home stretch. This repair in general is very easy to do. So let's get you guys closer. All right, so we are on the muffler side and we're just gonna take this clip out right here. Use the needle nose pliers, nice and easy. Okay, and then that clip you just push out the other end and it comes out like so. Put your clip back inside so you don't lose it and set it to the side. Next, we're gonna focus on this wing nut here, which bolts up top right there. See how it sets in? So I already started it, and we are just going to back out this wing nut. Alrighty, tidy, lefty, loosey applies to that. And then take it, your finger, whoop, and it pops right out. Set it aside, like so, and put it down. Now the next part is gonna be a little tricky. This is already broke. You see how it's stretched? So we can move that around all we want. Now because this is stretched, we're gonna use a set of vice grips to take this out. because that is the only way it is coming out. So the reason why I'm doing this here is this is all kiboshed and that nut is supposed to sit inside there in a shoulder and not move at all. And obviously that is not the case. Hopefully that's tight enough to squish the nut because from there, there is a 13 millimeter a half inch right here. And there we go. See how it dropped down? We're free. So now you can let this go. Just pull this up and out of the way. And now this can come out and the chute is free. Garbage anyway. Now, because I melted this nut in and heated with another washer in there, this is going to be a pain in the you know what to get out. But use your needle nose or something and pop that screw out. So with your nut out, all you have to do is insert it back here into the slot. See that? It is made to go right inside there. So just push this all the way in. If you have to give it a little force, I'm gonna be doing this off camera. By all means do it, don't be scared. It is normal. So with a little force, as you can see it's in, and all I did was I just took my needle nose and I pressed it in. Now we're gonna go back to putting this on the machine. Alrighty, so now that we have the old shoot out, we're gonna set the new one up. We're gonna stage it as if we're going 
to the left towards the camera. So we're just gonna take the chute, angle it all the way this way, and we have to, where'd you go? Line up this hole. Where is that hole? It's in here somewhere. So we're gonna line up the hole right here in that pin that we took out. Once we do that, then we know that this really is locked in the correct form it should be. It is going to be a little bit of tough, so we're just gonna get our needle nose. We're just gonna try and just work this in. Snap in. So why are you not snapping in? You're through the hole. Things are always easier coming out than they are. Alrighty, so we're gonna get this cotter pin in. Alright, if it doesn't line up, get a pair of vice grips. And then you can control the rod with leverage instead of trying to grab a smooth, and then you could line this cotter pin up because it gets a little tough. Slam that in there. Now, we will get the other bolt. Put that in the hole as well. We're gonna start securing this into the base. See how that's not lined up? So we just gotta get it lined up like so. Once that is lined up, let's get our housing on them. Remember, it's all the way to the right. And we just need to line it up with the bottom and press in. Now we'll take our plastic wing nut. Make it nice and tight as humanly possible. That's it. Because remember, you have to undo it. Then we will take our pin. And slide it into this hole. See this hole here? There's the hole right above there. Right? The same process that we had taking it off. Is the same process we have putting it back on slide our clip in and voila next is our magic bolt <clears throat> and once our bolt is in there start up by hand i'll take you guys down a little bit all right and then we're going to tighten this 13 millimeter now as we tighten it you're gonna see the bolt start sticking through and you know you are good. You do not wanna over tighten it or else you're gonna be back at square one and stripping stuff. Now before we put the chute on, let's make sure we have full range, which we do. Success. Now, we need to disassemble the chute. So this is obviously pretty easy. This is a wing nut. Let's take this off. Righty tidy. Lefty loosey. Now, I think we should be putting some lube-a-dube on that, which we will. 
And then the same thing here. Now remember, <clears throat> put pressure on the inside and undo the nut just like that. Throw that in the garbage. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna put some lube on the threads. Just like Andy sees. And then we can give this thing a go. Just a little bit of loop. And remember, the adjustment can only go one way. It's this big rectangular side. You can tighten that down. And then we do the same thing with the other nut. I'm a huge fan of putting stuff on, on threads. Only because, God willing, God forbid, the next time you take it apart, it's not a struggle. You are going to thank yourself later, or the next person who has to take this apart will thank you as well. Send it home. See, nice and tight. All right, let's confirm the repair one more time. Squeeze, move. There you go. Full range, full motion. Job all well done. All right guys, so very simple, very basic. This machine did throw me a little bit of a curveball. Here's your hint. Unrelated to this repair, I didn't include it in the video. I'll probably make a short out of it. Um, it's in reference to a friend that some of us like to call Fluffy the Mouse. So with that being said, remember guys, the link to purchase this will be in the description. If the link ever goes bad, drop a comment and I will update it. All right guys, not the toughest repair as well. Oh, that's right, the hack. Alrighty, so. The hack, MacGyver-like repair, is, this is our chute. And the mechanism sits inside here. Okay, this is not considered like a pivot point. Okay, so what you can do is make sure you have the correct spacing in the gap, drill a hole, this way, right? Not this way, where the nut, where the nut is, the opposite way, side to side, drill a hole and nut and bolt it. And then when you put two washers on each end, when you tighten it, you're gonna bring this back in. And that will be your repair. Now, remember, if I was to do this repair, there's an actual gap in a space that you guys need to acknowledge. So what I would do is before you drill this hole is observe this gap. You see this gap here? I would probably take like a line, like a marker or something and mark it here. And then you know when you have to drill your hole, when you take out this bolt, all right, because you're going to have to take out this bolt because you can't drill through the bolt. And you know when you drill your hole, you're going to support it and make sure everything lines up before you drill it. Or spend the money in a couple of minutes and replace it. That's entirely up to you. So with that being said, guys, remember, it's the bowl is in your court. Whether you want to try and drill that hole and line everything up or you just want to spend the money and repair it the way it was from the factory, keep an eye on this. Keep the mice out of this, and uh, you should be good to go. 
All right, guys, if you guys found this video helpful, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Guess what? I'll see you guys on the next episode of Pate's Performance. Later.